hit uh, David in Miami who says that he has proof that God exists and he believes that Judaism is the true religion. Hi, David. You're on with Tracy and Reggie. How are you? Good. Um, um, first, I want to say that uh, my phone and the video I was watching it on is not on the same rate, so I can't see your hand gestures or anything like that. I okay. just am talking to you on the phone. All right. Um, basically, um, I, I was, I, st- I, I, I believe that Judaism is the true religion, and I, I started, I already studied it for like a year, so I'm not so, in actually intelligent, but throughout this year, I, I, I did encounter like seven different um, proofs. Um, obviously, I don't think there will be enough time for all of them today, but. If there will be at least like three of them, maybe I could call another week, and then I'll just say the four. But you know, yeah. Start with your um, first, start with your best one, and and we'll work down and see where it goes. Okay. Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, um, oh, so it's not seven proofs, it's seven types of proofs. Meaning, like, there's more. There's um, examples for each. So okay. The first type of proof is like all the ones with nature. So basically. In, uh, I'll give you an example. So in the Torah, it says that um, that for um, so you know how there's like over two million different kinds of land animals, and I mean there's a lot of different kinds of animals that live on land, and it says that in order for um, animal for animals um, that live on land for it to be kosher for you to eat, it needs to have split hooves, and it must it's cut like vomit and swallow it again, um, which some animals do that. And basically, it says that there's going to only be four animals that will exist that will have only one of the two signs. It will either have split hooves or choose the cut, and that will be like the pig, the hare, um, the rabbit, and uh, the camel, I think. So it names the four. And then after 3,000 years, no one is able to find another animal except for those four that only have one of the two signs. And I doubt that someone in in um, the desert or 3,000 years ago without any computers would know something like that. Okay, are you impressed by that? Um, I am really impressed. I don't really see that so much in other religions. Um. I see it in Islam. That's exactly what Muslims say about Muhammad. They'll say that the Quran said this, or, um, but how would a man living 1,400 years ago know this about that? And then if you're not a Muslim, most of the time you're not impressed by it. Um, I can think of several examples that they cite, but um, they say exactly the same thing for Islam. And I I read the Quran, just like I read the Bible, and I'm not Muslim, so... um, and also, I, that was supposed to be a mistake in the Bible. Um, as far as I know, rabbits do not uh, chew the cud. Uh, so that was uh, something that I discovered when I was reading um, secular books. Um, so I, you, you might want to look into that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll look into it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm looking at Carm. I'm just trying to see because I was kind of, I had heard the same thing, but I wanted to sort of look it up at first. Um and by the way, it's the same thing with um, the fishes. So in order for they for them to be um, kosher, it needs to have scales and fins. And uh, it doesn't say it in the written Torah, but it says in the oral Torah that every fish that will have scales will have fins, and no one else could find a fish that has fins and not scales. Okay, well, um, not everybody knows the difference between the written and the oral Torah. I learned about that in my studies. Can you tell the audience what is the difference between the written and the oral Torah? So basically the written Torah is the famous Old Testament that everyone knows and that and it names 613 commandments. So you're not going to be able to know how to do any of the 613 commandments that are on there. It's just to, to um, keep this, the seventh day. So like you're not going to really know how to do any of the technicalities or anything like that. So, it, it, um, so uh, um, God taught the Jewish people and they um, and they uh, and and how to do all of the 613 commandments and then after 
many, many years, um, the Jewish people started forgetting them, so they started writing them, and now we have it, and it's called the Talmud. It's, it's, it's the Gemara and Mishnah, and basically there it has uh, the explanations of how to do the 613, which is not so famous. Okay. Where, where is God, and can he come to our show like right now? Um, it's just that if he does that, then the whole test of the world will, then if, if God, if God just shows himself to me right now, then, then. then Not to you. Can he come to the studio? Can he come to the studio where I am right now? And reveal himself to you? Yes. Um, he could. Yes. So why don't you have him come? Um, because then. The whole test, of the, then there won't be no test. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. What test? Because God should, God revealed himself to people all the time in the Old Testament. Yeah, God showed So his- there is no, the test of faith is like a, a Christian thing. When you're talking about God um, and faith in God, it, it had nothing to do with faith in the belief that God existed in the Old Testament. Faith in God meant that you, you thought that he was faithful to his word, right? So the question of God existing was not a question in the Old Testament because he actually went and had dinner, I think, with Abraham, mm-hmm. and he showed his back parts to, like, was it Moses? Moses, or, Moses huh? So God revealed himself to people, you know, flagrantly in the Old Testament. He, he showed up just like a person at dinner. So my question would be, what test are you talking about? Because faith in God in the Old Testament had nothing to do with people not knowing whether or not God existed because he revealed himself directly. Uh, yeah, um, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so I guess that doesn't make the difference, but, um, I could give you some more evidences. Well, I, I only ask that because I've, for me, the the best evidence is to show up. Like if, if Tracy and everybody who does this show and everything have been talking about some magical guy or somebody named Reggie forever and I've had the opportunity to show up and then now you can see me live you can talk to me live I think that's the best thing anybody can ask for especially for someone that's supposed to be everywhere at at the same time and has all this ability and power so I don't think it's too much to ask to have him show up right now and in that way you don't have to present seven proofs or anything we'll have the person in question, we can talk directly to Yeah, when there was a question, I've, I was looking it up to see, uh, yeah, and it was in 1 Kings 18, 13, where they, they have a contest, right? So there's a contest between the gods and the Jews call down... Uh, Elisha? Yeah, to, to come, to come and, and burn up, the, he burns up the altar, God burns up the altar, yeah, burns bulls. up the sacrifice, burns the soil, like just sends a fire that is out of control. It was a whole pyrotechnic show. <laughs> And Elisha was even talking smack to the priest of Baal. Yeah, about how their God wasn't doing anything. So, so God of the Old Testament, God of the Jews, was not uh, was not shy about showing himself. Right. And especially if if there was like a, a request for a test, right? There wasn't. You don't see stuff like that until Christianity, where they're saying like, "Oh, you don't tempt God and you don't test God." And it's in the Old Testament. If you tested God, He came down and just kicked your ass right in front of everyone. And in fact, there's a contradiction in the Bible. I think in Malachi where. Uh, Yahweh says directly to test them in reference to coming up with um, some financial goods or something to that. So besides all that, all I'm simply saying is that it will be the best thing is to have him show up right here, right now. We have cameras, we have microphones. Why doesn't he do that? Um, Or she. So there's two things. So first of all, I will ask this question to my rabbi and see what he says because uh, every question I ever ask, I mean, they always answer me with a logical answer. But second thing to this question is, um, just because he doesn't show up doesn't prove that he's that it's not true. Correct, correct. But what I'm saying is, and the reason I brought up the king's example was because there's many examples of God showing himself, for example, to people that already believed in him. But this was an example where he actually showed up when asked by one of his faithful in order to demonstrate to people who thought, you know, their God was the God, um, that he actually was the God. So this was him sort of demonstrating himself to people who were not believers and who were not his worshipers and who, and, and at the request of his 
uh, prophet, he was willing to come down and show himself and demonstrate to them that he was real. And so I'm just kind of saying that, you know, we have not only examples where he reveals himself straight up to his followers, but where he um, reveals himself to, to non-believers um, as well. Do you know if he likes tacos? Because we'll have tacos supposedly. <laughs> tonight for dinner. Tonight. If he wants to come for tacos, so I know he's he ate welcome. with Abraham. Um, so I don't know if it's kosher stuff and all that, but we'll try to yeah. accommodate him as best as we can. Now, to be fair, he invited himself to dinner with Abraham, so I don't know if he accepts invitations. Okay. so um, but, but, when we'll, it's, but when the door is open and God is welcome. Yeah, we'll work around the dietary pieces. So, And notice that you have to ask your rabbi and not ask your uh, Yahweh directly. I think that should be a clue right there, personally. But um, also, we can't have fire. We have restrictions. Okay. So he'd have to eat out in the parking lot. If, yeah, but we could work around that. Be, but I mean, we're just kind of being lighthearted about it. Please don't feel like we're, you know, making fun of you or anything like that. We're just having a little bit of fun here. Um, and so, let's see. Um, oh, what about um, if I were to tell you that um, last week we went to China together and we had a great time, and then we went to Hawaii and we. And we just five minutes ago we just ran two miles together. Mm-hmm. Um, you would probably say I'm crazy uh, that that did not happen. And I'm 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 I'm, su- I'm assuming that if a, a guy just comes to a whole nation and says, by the way, you guys were just in Egypt enslaved. You guys saw the ten plagues and then you saw the ocean split. And wait, 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 what? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want to hold up because the the whole Egypt. Pharaoh's story thing, I'm not sure is is valid. I mean, that's no, a, that's no, a no, myth. It's not valid. So let's say it's not. So let's not, so let's say it's not true. So a, a guy comes to all these people because he wants to show, he wants to give this book and start this religion, and basically he, he says, "You guys, all you guys, because the book says that the book is given to these people." So, um, so these, so he says, "Hey guys, so." So you guys saw the ocean split. Um, your clothes are growing with you. Uh, you're getting food from the sky, and you don't even have to go to the bathroom with it. Sure. All these things, all of these things. Don't you think that all these people, this whole nation, will just say, um, "Please get out of here. You're crazy." Um, right, they- but these are stories. Like, like that. That didn't happen. Right. I mean, when you go and look up archaeology, there's nothing to back up a story that should have some records and some other things that we would be able to find that would verify this. This isn't just like a a small thing where maybe they talk about a minor miracle with Jesus where there might have been just a few people in a room that would have seen it. I mean, you're talking about millions of people traversing this desert for 40 years, right, and breaking out of Egypt in this really, you know, very public way. And we don't have anything to demonstrate that that story's real and not a myth. And which, he, exactly. Right, but, but why would you say then that this is, that you think that this book is true? No, no, exactly. If you come to me with that story, I'm going to answer you back with, um, I wasn't there, and I don't... I'm not even saying I wasn't there. I'm saying that there should be some archaeological backup for this because it's a huge story that spanned a lot of time in areas of the world that did keep records, and they interacted with people. Okay, and in the ocean, didn't they find, you know, how when all the Egyptians drowned because of... No, if you're going to... Don't bring up the chariot wheel because that's a hoax. Um, Uh, uh. Look into the chariot wheel thing and you'll find that it's not very good evidence. Um. Are you sure you haven't? Okay. Have, have you? Are you sure that you haven't uh, looked into Islam because they made some of uh, the same claims, including this pharaoh that's supposedly been uh, preserved from that same scene from the Bible. But regardless, even if all those things did happen, what's wrong with him showing up right now and having some tacos with us, with camera equipment, and just having a good old time? Yeah, yeah, I'll ask. Uh, I really don't know. That's okay, fair. that's fair, yeah. Well, hey, we're yeah. going to we're gonna go ahead and move on to some other calls, David. Um, but I want to thank you for your call. And yes, you are, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're welcome to call back. I think you were very civil and, you know, you, you I think you expressed yourself uh, honestly, laid out what you thought and what impressed you, what didn't. And um, I think that's fair for a call. So 
uh, definitely feel free to call back if you have more to talk about or other questions or, uh, you know, as questions as far as how do atheists respond to this or what do you think about that? I think that's um, the types of calls that we're looking for. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Sure, thank you.